inside here you see this foreground galaxy, you see lots of individual stars in there actually resolve as point sources, which is remarkable. And then as we pan across, we actually see the, the galaxies in the emerging galaxies. We now see gas and dust, which is being heated up in the collision between those galaxies. Time, we're seeing brand new stars that were previously completely hidden from our view. Hi, this is Adam for Jason Adam TV on YouTube. Uh, tonight, or this morning, depending on which part of Earth you live on, we got the first images from the James Webb Space Telescope. Why is this such a big deal? Well, the James Webb Space Telescope has a much bigger aperture than the Hubble Space Telescope. It has an aperture of about 6.5 meters, while the Hubble had an aperture of about 2.4. What that means is the James Webb Space Telescope can take in much more light and detail than the older Hubble Space Telescope. There are also some other differences. I'm not going to go too much into specifics. Um, but the Hubble was designed to capture uh, visible light, and the James Webb Space Telescope was designed to capture infrared and near-infrared. So uh, let's take a look at the first images, which uh, NASA just released. The first one is the deep field picture. And this picture is extremely interesting because it shows the effect of gravitational lensing. Gravitational lensing is the bending of light and magnification of light from very, very far away. In this case, as far as 13 billion light years away. Um, so it's acting like uh, there's a there are some dense objects in the center that are acting like magnifying glasses. And they are magnifying these very, very distant galaxies. Ones that are up to 13 billion light years away at the very infancy or very beginning of our universe. Um, so you can see a lot of these galaxies are bent. They look crooked. Uh, if you zoom in a little bit, you can see one that looks kind of like a pancake or an omelet. Um, so this is due to the gravitational lensing effect. Also, the reddest galaxies uh, are the ones that are furthest away. So you can see some galaxies are redder than others. Those are further away than the ones that are bluer or yellowish colored. Another interesting thing is the number of galaxies in this picture. This is just a tiny sliver, a tiny fraction of the night sky. And you can see thousands of galaxies in this picture. Uh, and each galaxy on its own contains billions of stars. And these stars most likely have planets around them. So there are trillions of planets in this picture, we, we just can't see them. If this doesn't give you an idea of how insignificant and how small the Earth and our solar system are, then I don't know what will. This is just a breathtaking image. It's, it's hard to fathom how great, how large the universe is. But you get some idea by looking at this deep field picture. Okay, the next picture I'm going to talk about is the uh, planetary nebula. So a planetary nebula doesn't involve planets. It is actually a star that is dying. A star like the sun. So when the sun dies, our sun dies, it will first expand into a red dwarf as it burns through helium and then it will reach some higher elements 
when it gets to, when our sun gets to the higher elements, the heavier elements, the pressure of gravity will be greater than the pressure created by the fusion reaction in our uh, sun's core. And what will happen is the sun will collapse and it will create a white dwarf and around the sun will be the expelled gas and that's what creates a planetary nebula. So uh, looking at this picture again if you zoom in you can see the details of the the gas that has been the clouds of gas that has been expelled from the stellar core. Uh, again a very amazing picture and uh, one of the scientists pointed out at NASA there is actually an edge on galaxy in the outer fringes of this planetary nebula right here in the picture. So um, again another very interesting detail and you can also see other galaxies behind the nebula if you look closer. So uh, again an astounding picture. I mean even though the planetary nebula is is the brightest thing in the picture you can still pick up faraway galaxies in the background if you zoom in. Okay the next picture that I'm going to uh, that one hasn't loaded yet. Okay let's go to this one. Uh, this is the Carina Nebula. So this is a stellar nursery. There are tons of stars being born in this nebula and it looks beautiful. You can see the gas in the nebula and you can see all of these stars speckled across the gas of the nebula. So another amazing picture from the James Webb Space Telescope. The, the detail is again amazing. If you zoom in uh, you'll notice there's uh, an hexagonal um, artifact around the brightest stars. Uh, that's due to the shape of the mirrors on the James Webb Space Telescope, but it doesn't affect the uh, resolution of the telescope itself. Okay, let me reload this picture. There should be a picture of Stephen's Quintet, uh, Stephen's Quintet in here. And, and this is a group of five galaxies that are um, locked in a gravitational dance around each other. And uh, is also a very, very interesting picture. Uh, let me go back and click on it again and see if I can um, get this picture to load. Okay, there we go. It is loading now. So again, the amount of detail that is captured in this image is, is just amazing. If you compare it to the, uh, the Hubble Space Telescope image of the same uh, five galaxies. So if I remember correctly, these galaxies are about 300 million light years away. Um, still very far away. 300 million light years. So we're viewing them as they appeared 300 million years ago. All right, so as you can see, there are two galaxies that are very close together. I think I zoomed in too much. Um, and you can see they're kind of, it looks like they're feeding off each other. And then there are three other galaxies surrounding that are also uh, gravitationally bound to the other two galaxies. So this is a very, very interesting picture. Stefan's galaxy, uh, Stefan's quintet, excuse me. And again, if you look in the background, you can see amazing details of faraway galaxies. And you can see dim dots 
that are even further away. These, these are also galaxies. And so it just, again, it blows the mind. It blows your mind um, at just how large the universe is. For all intents and purposes, uh, for imagining, the universe is uh, just infinite, infinite. I mean, it, even if it is finite, we don't have the technology to view the whole thing. And, and you get this sense when you look at the images from the James Webb Space Telescope. So, um, I'd like to hear what you think about the images from the James Webb Space Telescope. Um, and it, again, this could uh, lead to new physics, uh, new um, laws of physics. In the video, the hostess, the scientist actually talk about the, the elements of nebula and the galaxies are similar, very similar to no, well, of, of course, galaxies and nebulas both form from dust that is uh, becomes gravitationally bound together. Um, everything, even the slightest speck of dust, has a gravitational field. And um, over time, you know, as the dust floats through space, it can become gravitationally bound. And then, due to angular momentum, the cloud of dust can collapse in on itself and form nuclear fusion. That's how our sun, that's how all stars form, from a dust cloud that uh, was once swirling around like a galaxy. And uh, it just showed us a picture of five layers. Angular momentum collapses the dust cloud and the pressure creates nuclear fusion, which uh, creates a star. It actually shows us five layers, a picture of five layers of elements that uh, consists of a um, galaxy. Right, uh, the James Webb Space Telescope, you can go look this up on the website. They also have uh, spectra of the nebulas, uh, nebulae, and and galaxies, and they also have a uh, spectrograph image uh, for the uh, for WASP. I forget the name. I think it's WASP B, if it's I'm not mistaken. Easy. It's an exoplanet. So yeah, from this, they can tell what the nebulae and what the uh, the galaxies are made up of, uh, what the components are, the um, the components that form the stars and the galaxies like hydrogen, helium, and of course the farther back you go in time, the lighter the elements. The heavier elements that we see in galaxies like the Milky Way were formed over billions of years from stars that went supernova, stars much bigger than the Sun, and that's how we got the heavier elements that we see today. But, uh, but yeah, go to the James Webb Space Telescope website and, and check out the images. And also there's a much better, there are much better explanations there than I'm giving you in this video. Uh, but I just wanted to convey my um, happiness and also excitement because the closer we get the sharper our vision, the better we can test physical theories and theoretical physics. And, and that's what it's, it takes to prove theoretical physics. Um, there are still many theories in physics that we haven't been able to prove uh, experimentally yet. And the James Webb, James Webb Telescope could help do that. So we're living in exciting times. Um, you know, science will be able to grow by leaps and bounds. And James Webb isn't the end of this. NASA is going to build the Roman Space Telescope, 
which if I'm not mistaken, will have an eight meter aperture. And um, it will have even better resolution than the James Webb Space Telescope. So there are exciting times ahead. I hope I live to see them. And uh, I hope you do too. Um, if you have any comments, please leave them. And thank you for watching Jason Adam TV. Give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't, please subscribe. Bye-bye.